This is a Media Police Post broadcasting from the Photo School of Government. In this show, we police the state of truth in the Republic. And because truth is communicated to us by journalists and analysts, we have made it our civic duty to put it to the test. We advance from two confirmed truths about the media. One, and according to Roger Stone, the media is either lazy or evil, and for the most part, is evil and lazy. That is why the truth, their truth, must be put to a test. And two, the journalism is verified gossip. In fact, what is presented to us as news analysis is gossip that has been verified by journalists. This gossip has to be ground truth. We will assess the state of truth in what they submit to the Republic, and we will pass verdict on what is true and what is not. For the record, we are not journalists, we are thinkers. We are not lazy or evil and we do not verify gossip. What we give you is the truth, the truth that sets you free. On today's show, we will discuss ideas that reflect unformed and uninformed opinions mm -hmm. and ideas that made you stupid. Narratives that fell into the cognitive trap of we see things as we are, not as they are. Narratives based on conjecture, history, and those that smack of envelope journalism. Welcome to M and MC Square. Thank you. All right, so yesterday, CS Mokuman released the SDR loan agreement documents. And today, we want to tell you why he was right to do so, even as Kenya Kwanzaa got caught in the crossfire. It is clear that Mokuman released the documents in an attempt to further shame President Uhuru Kenyatta's legacy. The SGR is one of Uhuru's most impressive infrastructural achievements, and the documents showed country just how much we sacrificed to get the SGR. Mm. But the document also suggests that Kenya Kwanzaa are partly to blame for this loss. Mm. Both Ruta and Murkomen were in government in 2014, mm. where they had a chance to reject the agreement, yet they did not. Yeah. In 2014, as DP, Ruto chaired cabinet meetings where he was updated on the status of various projects, including SGR. Mm. And he frequently inspected the SGR as it was being constructed. Yeah. And not once did he publicly reject the SGR in this time. In fact, the man who signed the agreement, Henry Rotich, was nominated to cabinet by Ruto himself, oh, yeah. a man who was jailed and charged in the 63 billion shilling Aurora and Kimwera scandal. And Morkamen, as an active member of the Senate, provided oversight for government expenditure. Yet he rarely used his active voice to speak against the agreement. In fact, he voted yes on the agreement when it came before Parliament. Put together, this means that both men bear some responsibility for Kenya's sacrifices. Yeah. On these facts alone, it feels like Mokumen's strategy to further shame the Uhuru administration did not go according to plan. The SGR agreement indicts him as much as President Kenyatta. Yeah. But allow me to flip my argument to reveal the brilliance of Mokumen's move with three points. Mm. First, Mokumen only told us what we needed to know. Mm. He did not give us the full picture. Mm. He only showed us what we lost, yes. and he did not tell us what we gained. Absolutely. The SGR alone is responsible for growing our GDP by 1.5%. It created 46,000 jobs and was a key part in stabilizing East Africa's economy by opening up reliable trade routes. Without mm. this information, it is quite clear what the Kenya Kwanzaa agenda is. Yeah. The Kenya Kwanzaa administration can continue telling country that SGR under Uhuru was only bad. Without this information, Kenya Kwanzaa solidifies a narrative that suits and benefits them. Mm -hmm. Second, Mokumen provided concrete proof to back up this narrative. Before we saw the contract, it was all talk. Yeah. When Uhuru told us that SGR was good, we could not properly judge because we did not know its true and total cost. Mm -hmm. Equally, Ruto told us that SGR was bad. We could not properly judge because we did not know its true and total cost. Mm -hmm. Now country has seen the agreement. Yeah. So now when Ruto says Uhuru was bad, we have proof beyond one man's opinion. Mm -hmm. Third, mm -hmm. Mokamen showed country that Kenya Kwanzaa was willing to be honest, even if it is to say things we don't want to hear. And that that, and that the same cannot be said of the Uhuru administration. In May 2022, a high court ordered the Uhuru government to share the SDR documents with country. Yeah. And as one of its last acts, they declined to do so. Compare this with the Ruto administration. 
In its first 100 days, they practiced the same kind of transparency that the Uhuru administration did not in its last 100. Yeah. Now, one could argue that it might set the tone for the next 10 years and build trust in Ruto's government. Mm -hmm. When you put all these things together, Murkoman's transparency was a stroke of political genius. In only giving us half the story, Kenya Kwanzaa could tell us the other half. Yeah. In providing proof of Uhuru's supposed badness, Kenya Kwanzaa have shown us their goodness. Yes. Mm. And in being honest, Kenya Kwanzaa <coughs> may be, might be trying to tell country that only they can be trusted. <coughs> but as a country, should we be worried about the timing of this, dis of this disclosure? Mm. Because it indicates a pattern within Kenya Kwanzaa. When in crisis, deflect, deflect, <laughs> deflect. Is it any wonder that, the, that these documents were released just as KQ pilots are on strike? Mm. Is it possible that after the next crisis, we will hear of the expressway agreements <laughs> or perhaps the Aurora and Kimura <laughs> dam contracts? It's, it's, I mean, wonderful hypothesis. And people must know that mm. the, the SGR contract was not yeah. released. Yeah. What was released was a financial mm -hmm. agreement. Yes. Uh, the, the SGR contract has an NDA non-disclosure yes. agreement mm. close to it. <laughs> and I do not think if there's any, I don't think there's any minister who would release that to the public. No, 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 no. Mm. And talking of crisis, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> today is day 54 of the Ruto presidency. Mm. Congratulations, Your Excellency. You are 10 days past least Trazer's fate. But for these 54 to 4 days, <laughs> The Ruto administration seems to be in a state of perpetual crisis. Mm. Last week alone, we saw tax reform that did not make the hustlers happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. An ongoing pilot strike, which is costing country 300 million shillings a day. Mm -hmm. The PS appointees list was also met with criticism in that it lacked regional representation. Mm -hmm. You can even add the DPP and yep. the DCI problem. Mm -hmm. You can add the effects of the ravaging drought. Mm -hmm. And now that God has blessed us with rain, soon there will be floods. <laughs> Luther seems to have his hands full of problems. Mm -hmm. And if indeed country is in crisis, our hypothesis is that Ruto is a man who thrives in a crisis. Mm -hmm. I would like to explain this hypothesis using two examples. Yeah. One from 2013 mm -hmm. and the other from 2022. Mm -hmm. In 2010, Ruto was named as a suspect of the 2007 post-election violence. Yeah. To anyone at the time, it appeared as if it was the end of his political career. Mm -hmm. But to thrive in this crisis, Ruto formed an alliance with Uhuru, a fellow suspect, and they went around the country in rallies and church meetings, portraying themselves as victims of neocolonialism. Simply put, Ruto managed to convince country that he was not a post-election violence suspect, but a victim of Western interference in Kenyan affairs. Mm. For this reason, the nation rallied behind them, not as victims, but as nationalists. Yeah. And they won the 2013 election. My second example is how Ruto won the just concluded elections. Mm -hmm. Ruto had two crisis situations against him. Yeah. Number one, he was isolated in a government where he was the deputy president. He was denied access to government resources. He could not even campaign effectively. Mm -hmm. A number of cases were even opened against his close allies to further isolate his support. Mm -hmm. It is only now we are knowing that it was hot hair. <laughs> <laughs> to thrive in this crisis, Ruto successfully opposed his own government to appeal to the Kenyan voter. Second, Ruto had no certain voting bloc other than the Kalenjin nation. The crisis against him was votes. Mm -hmm. And to thrive in this crisis, Ruto made the election a class war. He made the Asla versus dynasty narrative his number one weapon. Mm -hmm. People who originally identified as ethnic now identified as hustlers. Mm -hmm. It worked. Yes. Miracles. Yes. What is my point? Mm. Ruto is a man who has never let a good crisis go to waste. Yes. In using crisis situations, Ruto has made it to the top of the Kenyan political ladder. Mm -hmm. Now, he is the president. Yes. At this level, though, he must deal with things differently mm. because the stakes are higher. Yes. 
can Ruto, the president, thrive in the crisis we are seeing, as he has done before? Mm -hmm. Can he use his political genius to move country out of this crisis? Mm. Mm. President Ruto's desk at State House might even see more crisis situations in the coming months. Yeah. Distracting the public with things like the SGR contract cannot last for long. <laughs> Some of these problems will need to be fixed eventually. Mm -hmm. MC Squared, you said that if you pray for rain, you might as well deal with the floods. <laughs> I want to add, mm -hmm. if you pray for rain, you might as well be prepared to deal with the mud. <laughs> Last week, President William Ruto flagged off Kenyan troops to Eastern DRC. The mission to keep the peace, at least on paper. Mm -hmm. But what, what, what most do not know is that the area KDF will be governing has been governed for over 30 years by militia groups allegedly sponsored by Uganda and Rwanda. Mm -hmm. In fact, the area KDF will be occupying is currently securitized by a militia group known as M23. The United Nations is on record linking M23 to Rwanda and Uganda governments. Mm. And more recently, none other than President Museveni's son, Muhozi Kainerogaba, mm -hmm. on Twitter warned, and I quote, as for M23, <coughs> I think it is very, very dangerous for anybody to fight those brothers of ours. Yeah. They are not terrorists. They are fighting for the rights of Tutsis in DRC. Mm. That, in my view, was a coded message directed at Kenya. Mm -hmm. Back in 2016, Professor Mutai Ngunyi and Professor Katumanga Musimbai offered a working paper dubbed The Axis of Extraction in the Horn, Militia Groups, Predatory States, and Rogue Capital. Yeah. In that publication was an area located in Eastern DRC known as Kivu. Mm -hmm. In the working paper, we call it the Kivu Convergence. Kivu is a region in eastern DRC bordering Uganda, Rwanda, and Burundi. Kivu's underground mineral wealth is worth $24 trillion. Yes. This is more than the entire GDP of the United States of America. Mm. The United Nations is on record, again, blaming, uh, blaming Kigali and Kampala for building their wealth on the back of Kivu's underground wealth. Yeah. If this is true, then the question should be how are Uganda and Rwanda viewing Kenya's military role in Eastern DRC? Mm -hmm. Put differently, if KDF occupies an area that has been occupied by Uganda and Rwanda for over 30 years, mm -hmm. it would be deemed that Kenya is interfering with, Ruga with Rwanda and Uganda's money. Yeah. Yeah. But before I go further, allow me to tell you a story. On the morning of now, January 15th, 2016, mm -hmm. Al-Shabaab attacked a KDF military base in El Ade in Somalia. The camp housed about 200 KDF, about 200 KDF soldiers. Mm -hmm. yeah. No one knows what the casualty numbers look like. Yeah. But the press maintained or they painted a grim picture. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Somalia president then insinuated that all soldiers had died in that attack. What's my point here? President William Ruto would do well to study Museveni and Kagame. Mm -hmm. Kagame was once Museveni's chief intelligence officer. Mm -hmm. Both made sure their main chef, Lure Desire Kabila, became yes. president of DRC in 1997. Mm. Museveni and Kagame became president by way of coups. Mm. Both have held fought in Eastern DRC for more than three decades. Mm. True. They are East Africa's original political gangsters. Mm. If they want Ruto to look bad, El Ade isn't a far-fetched thought for them. Ruto should not check a checker with them. He must show them his political gangsterness. Yes. Thank yes. you for joining us on the Media Police Post. See you next Monday, columnists. You've been put on notice. God bless.